Hello everyone, this is Adam Anderson, Product Trainer at Maple Systems. Welcome back to our EB Pro training series. In the last video, we discussed how to scale raw inputs on the HMI, and for that we used interpolation. In this video, we'll walk you through how to display and enter different data types or data formats on your Maple Systems HMI, and how to change the keypad or keyboard that you use to input that data. Let's take a look at this new window we have set up, and what we have here so far. We've copied over the previous numeric inputs and that sum function from a previous video. So we know that we can click here, brings up a keypad, and then we can enter in a value, and it will create that sum for us. On this next numeric input, we change the keypad and also the position where it pops up, though. So we'll show you how to do this. We'll talk about data formats. For example, if I wanted to enter in a value with a decimal point here, 9.99. I can't do it. There's an issue with the data format and how I set up the, this numeric input object. So we'll take a look at that and how we can resolve that issue. Next is the keypad selection. If I wanted to enter in a hex value here, I couldn't do it. And all I can enter in is numbers. So if I enter in 9999, it just errors out and goes back to zero. Finally, the position of the keypad. So this is the actual hex keypad that we could select. We have a hex value and we have it popping up in the lower right hand corner of the screen. So we have options for this and we'll show you that in this video as well. So first, let's go back to the basics. How do we set up a numeric object? We choose a read or write address, allow input, and set the format here. So 16-bit unsigned is the default but we have other options, BCD, hex, and 32-bit, unsigned, signed, or float. We'll show you some examples of 32-bit float in this video. And from the data entry tab, we'll see that we can select the keypad from this window number dropdown. Keypad one integer is the default. We have a number of other options there. And you can find an example of what these look like from the window tree sidebar. If you scroll down, then you can double click to open any of these. That's the default keypad. The second keypad we showed you is this one. We'll also show you keypad 8 floating and keypad 3 integer and later on we'll enter in some ASCII or Unicode strings as well and for that we'll use some of these ASCII keyboards. This is the medium sized one and then the small sized one. So let's go back now and we set up some new tags here for our 32-bit float data types but like we saw if you're just setting it up with a local word you can easily set the format from this device data format drop down here so we're going to copy over some of these 32-bit floats that we set up okay so let's look at the settings for this one we have it set to a user defined tag where you can set those up is from the project tab go to address user defined tags and you'll see that we have these set to 32-bit float here and we name them in advance. From the format tab we have it set to six digits left of decimal and three digits to the right. For data entry we selected keypad 8 for this one and here's where you can select the keypad pop-up position. So we have this one set to pop up in the middle on the right hand side of the screen on the HMI. And for my flow 2 we have this one set up to use keypad 3 and the position is to the right in the middle there too with the same format options. We also set up a similar macro to what we had in that original video and we'll show you how that works in a moment but let's first see how it looks and how it behaves when we run the simulation. So now that we have this set up as 32-bit float we can enter in a value with three decimal places and then we can enter in another value here and we'll see the sum displayed there again this is our keypad for this one different keypad here different keypad here and different keypad here so we have a lot of options any of these keypads will work for a signed or unsigned value since they all have the minus sign and they'll all work for any value with digits to the right of the decimal place because they all have the decimal point there.
let's look at the macro now in the project tab macro originally we set up this macro where we have short as the data type for these variables they're 16-bit we just copied and pasted to create the second version that uses the 32-bit float data the main difference is we have float here for the data type in the macro and then we write that out back to the appropriate tag at the end so now we've seen how we can set the data format how we can change the number of digits left to right of decimal how we can select a different keypad for entering in numeric values and also set the position where the keypad will pop up now we'll wrap up with talking about ASCII and Unicode strings for this you go to the object tab select ASCII input and choose a read or write address we're just choosing local word 20 because that's not in use data format here this is very important if Unicode is not selected then ASCII is the default the main difference being that with ASCII mode you can write two characters into every one register on the HMI so in local word 20 itself you could store two characters with ASCII mode if we change it to Unicode mode you can store only one character in each register on the HMI because Unicode allows for embedding more complex information with each character and that lets you represent different things like the Asian scripts and diacritics or accents on your characters and so on so what we'll do is set up the read and write address using ASCII mode first and we need to go into the settings here to set the number of words this is for the length of the string for what we expect will be the maximum length that we need so if we set it to 10 words here with ASCII mode we can enter in 20 characters so we'll go ahead and do that and add that to our screen then we can set up another one copy and paste and we'll change this to Unicode we're gonna keep the same number of words but as I mentioned here we only have one character that we can represent in each register because of the different encoding that we have so we'll click OK and we added a label there now we're gonna run our offline simulation just remember we are looking at the same register with both of these inputs run the simulation and first we're gonna enter in a string in the Unicode input object we'll enter in hello and notice with the ASCII display we have a space between each of the characters again that's because Unicode has one character per register and ASCII has two so it'll just add a space in between now if we try to go the other direction if we write an ASCII string into this register with the Unicode display it will not show up properly and everything will be garbled so let's go ahead and try it though okay so now we see that the encoding is not correct here because we entered in an ASCII string it can't show up properly in that position so if you have to enter in an ASCII string in one place in your project and a Unicode string somewhere else just be sure to choose different sets of registers and account for the length of the string so we can do 20 characters starting at local word 20 they'll go from local word 20 to 29 so if we just change this to local word 30 we won't run into that issue anymore now we can type in a string here and that's just occupying local words 20 through 29 and we can enter in a different string here and we don't have any issue So that's how we can enter and display ASCII and Unicode strings on the HMI in the next video we'll go on to discuss the differences between VNC, which we use with our advanced HMIs to control and monitor the displays remotely, versus our smart CMT series HMIs, which, which use the CMT viewer app that saves you data and allows for multiple operators to view and, and operate on different screens at the same time. Be sure to check that out, and we'll see you in the next episode.